why is machine vision critical to uh, factory automation today? I know that you, you've, I mean, you've just explained beautifully on uh, where some of the, the pain points have been, yeah. but we're also seeing um, a very big uptake in recent years. That's right. So uh, tell me a little bit about what you what you know about market trends and trajectories for machine vision. Absolutely. So I think I might want to lay a little bit of a map around these two subjects that are that have a fine line but always been confused uh, between, which is computer vision and machine vision. Um, a lot of algorithms actually are born out of computer vision, uh, and that starts from data. Most of the computer vision is, as to the name, is after your image has reached your computer, right? But when it comes to machine vision, it is trying to replace a human being, right? It is trying to make a machine autonomous. This is how we define them, right? Uh, well, computer vision always is to augment a human being in consuming the image better from your Adobe Photoshop to your even most of your sophisticated open AI algorithms to vision transformers and whatever that you have built on top of it is a sequence of identification machines, which are helping you to, you know, uh, from your barcode reading to whatnot, right? There's always a human in the loop. Whereas in machine vision, there is no human in the loop. You are trying to remove the human in the loop, right? That is the crux in which you would have to understand machine vision from. And when you do that, there's a lot of adaptive vision that comes into play. When I contrast with the computer vision in general, you don't know what's the source of the image which lighting it was taken from, what is the orientation it was taken from, what camera are you using to take, what lens, what, I don't know, any of those, none of those information, right? What, are, what was the distance between the object and so on and so forth? None of these, right? You're just jumping direct to the image and you're hoping that you will be able to recognize, make the machine recognize as well as you do. But you do because you have a large period of training upon those things and you know what those machines are, what those systems are, what those components are, what in your physical environment is, so I'm starting from a leaf to a pen, you know, and you, you, you have, you have witnessed them all. So you're able to recognize out of an image. A machine has no context, right? On the other hand, if I give you a coin, right? And I ask you to find what is embossed on top of a coin, let's say a penny or a dollar, or I don't know whether the dollar comes in a coin, but let's say a penny for that case, you don't keep staring the way I gave it and take millions of images and then, you know, try to learn what is written on top of it and then recognize them. The first thing you do is to tilt. I'm not able to recognize. I don't go back learning. When I'm not able to recognize, I just tilt it to a point where I can recognize, right? Or I just tilt my head. This basic capability that you have within the system to adaptively look at the scene and then collect information is a foundational aspect. And this is where it differentiates, right? When you are starting from machine vision, your algorithm begins from hardware. Your algorithm doesn't begin from the data, right? Your design begins from the hardware. So you are adapting and you are looking at different orientations, you also have to design the lens, optics, the lighting, the resolution of the camera, the pattern of the sensors that you use, the communication protocols. So you first do a very large set of hardware design, then you go into your uh, your algorithms to, to suffice whatever that you cannot control through your hardware or you cannot acquire through or tally with your hardware to be able to understand, right? So this is this is the foundational difference. Now, why is it very important for the manufacturing or let's say the industry in general, right? It's it's very broad. It could be process industry, machine vision assets application in a very large extent, right? Wherever you're trying to replace a human eye, simplistically put, is where you need machine vision. Very simple, right? Where all do we uh, replace human eye? If I simplistically uh, categorize them, Either to for quality purposes where you're identifying and looking for defects or looking for validations or verifications, uh, where verification could be measurements, verification could be just looking at you know some deviations from your labels or product product you know uh, dimensions and so on and so forth or surface finish and so on and so forth, so like fine details, or it could be to help assist in manipulating objects, and where where machine vision is quite sophisticated today is at the identification location uh, portion of it, where you are either to classify or to kind of, uh, you know, uh, look at the defects and then so on and so forth. But when it comes to guiding a system, act as a you know, feedback system to go manipulate an object, pick up a simple task like picking a screw and then putting it into a screw hole and then bolting it is an unsolved problem all across the globe, right? So you there is no machines that are handling them. You might have special purpose machines which 
you could have done for one thing but in a moving car chassis going upside down and then having a bolt you know picking a bolt from a bin and then putting it into a screw hole adjusting to it even to this action there's no system that can guide uh, to the extent right and this there is no better reason than this for us to automate right now uh, on the other hand since audience are pretty much from a machine design perspective uh, the industry you mentioned that it is uh, 90 years old i didn't know um, it's a 19, 19 almost a 100 uh, century uh, it's going to hit a century now right okay. so from a from a that matured industry point of view it's used to, to building special purpose machines machines that can do they can create specific parts specific dimensions specific objects but when it comes to assembling parts it has always been very difficult a car has 22000 parts and you are doing close to around 10000 jobs on a on a particular car probably gm alone is in us alone is deploying around 155000 uh, people blue collar labor right on the contrary the highest amount of machinery adopting or especially robotic arm adopting industry is also automotive and among the organized sector the largest deployer of uh, blue collar labor is also is automotive right uh, among the organized sector i'm not talking about the agriculture construction which is largely kind of unorganized uh, in a way uh, more gig workers and so on and so forth so why is that so why are they not able to replace the rest of the other jobs while they want to right why are they not able to do it what is so complicated about it simply because you have to go hyper engineer this whole environment how do you put 22000 parts by engineering the whole environment so tightly now if i come back a um, uh, uh, step back and then see what is the difficulty in making a robotic arm is just a machine right with six motors being there precisely positioning and then going to a particular position the the arm that you are seeing behind promises 50 micron of accuracy there's another arm from kuka that promises 20 micron of repeatability so which means if i make the take a joystick make the arm move to a location ask it to repeat this position for next 2 years without any recalibration will keep repeating at a 20 micron of precision in that place right but that's also the bane why if you cannot present the part within the 20 micron of precision this this robot gun will go fall now how do i arrest my whole environment in such a way that every 22000 parts come exactly in the precise locations as you as you expect right each of them varied how do you even make a wire stay in a you know particular location as it is like it keeps twisting changing so you need a system that can adapt only then there can be robotic arms that come into that's the crux of machine vision and that's the largest market for machine vision making robotic arms mobilize uh, and and for the customer what is the value in it for him today when they have to do an automation when they have to attempt to make an automation of a human task uh, or replace a human being where he is just putting two parts together right he has to go about spending 24 months to 15 months of design and bring together 30 plus different technologies right and uh, possibly you know uh, only after which he will know whether it will work but possibly spend 70% additional cost on top of a robotic arm to make it work so uh, if a robot come costs around $30,000 to $50,000 he will spend up spend anywhere between $100,000 to $120,000 on on top of it to make it work right so uh, the customer is not sh- very sure whether the robotic arm that the amount that he is investing on the robotic arm is going to work because 70% of the cost is customization that's like you buy a fr- refrigerator today just to put a plug on to your power supply you have to spend you know 70% more cost right so, that's that's ridiculous in the way the industry is it's closed down the whole industry uh all this goes for a it goes in a vein if the dimension of the part changes why do you need it all the 70% cost or customization goes in ensuring that this part comes within 20 micron of precision if not 20 micron 0.2 mm or 0.5 mm to the gripper's tolerance that you have to actually bring it into this is a lot of constraint that you're putting into the design and it limits a lot of options and opportunity for the customer because of which a lot of automatable tasks remain unautomatable because it becomes an engineering nightmare neither is the investment into this is defensible on the other hand a human being if it is slightly tilted this way from here it was tilted this way you'll adjust his hand and then pick it very simple you don't need any of this customization that actually comes in all of these places that is the crux of the technology that we build how do we make the robotic arms become intuitive enough to go grasp those parts with or for the condition that you have never programmed for or you have never trained for 
which is most of the conditions. So I think this is where the majority of the value is. And machine vision as a stack has to evolve independently and differently from how computer vision is. For a lot of cases, computer vision does not scale for realistic applications. And uh, the whole stack of machine vision has to be relooked from uh, because there is so much of physics of light that is involved in it, physics of optics that is involved in it, and algorithms or design. And more than algorithms, it's the whole design of the system has to be approached very differently. And uh, this is a lot more of reinforcement learning problem where you have a lot of dynamic feedback that has to keep coming into and options for the system to adjust and adapt is a lot more. So yeah, I think um, I may have captured some portions of it. Let me see. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I am um, honestly overwhelmed. There's so much that you are that you've captured.